units are specific elements in a ring. The definition of a unit is as follows. An element A in a ring with the elements in R and the multiplication and addition operations is called a unit if it has a multiplicative inverse. That means that there is an element that we are going to denote a to the minus 1 which is in the set R such that a times a to the minus 1 equals a to the minus 1 times a which equals 1. For the units in our ring we have the following theorem. So we have our ring. If the element a in R has a multiplicative inverse that we call a to the minus 1 then this inverse is unique. So not only do we have the additive inverse that is unique, we also here have the theorem that says that the multiplicative inverse is unique. And when we prove this, we prove this in a similar way as for the additive inverse. So we're just going to say that we assume that there are two elements that are the inverse. So then we can write a times a to the minus 1 equals a to the minus 1 times a equals 1. And if we now have another element that is also an inverse, it means that we can write a times b equals b times a equals 1. So based on this we can write b equals b times 1 because we have an identity element. This will now equal b times a times a to the minus 1 because this will equal 1 because it is our inverse then by using the associative law we can write this as b times a times a to the minus 1 and b times a we have already said that it is 1 so this we can write as 1 times a to the minus 1 and since the multiplicative identity element commutes we can just write this as a to the minus 1 times 1 and this we have said equals a to the minus 1 because we have the multiplicative identity element. So what we have shown here is that b equals a to the minus 1. So what we have shown here is that b equals a to the minus 1. So let us look at a few examples of rings that are particularly interesting for us. So the first ring here is the ring with the elements 0 and 1 and where we have defined the addition operation as addition modulo 2 and the multiplication operation is also multiplication modulo 2. So the unit here will be our element 1 because the 1 has the multiplicative inverse. And here is another ring where we have the elements 0, 1 and 2 and the addition operation is defined as addition modulo 3 and the multiplication is multiplication modulo 3. Here we can see that the units are the elements 1 and 2 because both of these have multiplicative inverses. The inverse of 1 is 1 and the inverse of 2 is 2. So the units here are the elements 1 and 2. We add a new element and here we have Z4 where we have a similar definition for the addition and the multiplication and here we can see that our units are the elements 1 and 3 because the inverse of 1 is 1 and the inverse of 3 is also 3. So the units here are the elements 1 and 3. Adding one more element, we have the ring Z5 and the operations addition modulo 5 and multiplication modulo 5. And looking at this table, we see that the units that we have are the element 1, and we have the element 2, the element 3, and the element 4. So all of these are units because they have a multiplicative inverse. So the units here are 1, 2, 3 and 4. The last example here we will have the ring with the elements in Z6 where we have the addition modulo 6 and multiplication modulo 6 as operations. If we look at 
this table we see that the units that we have is 1 because the inverse of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 is 1. 2 does not have an inverse, 3 does not have an inverse, 4 does not have an inverse, but 5 do have an inverse and the inverse of 5 is 5 because 5 times 5 is 1. If we look at this, what we can see is that we start to see a pattern. And the pattern that we have is that if the GCD between the number of elements in the set and the specific element is 1, then it is a unit. So in this case here, we have that the GCD between 6 and 1 is 1, so 1 is a unit, and the GCD of 6 and 5 is also 1, so 5 is also a unit. The GCD of 6 and 2 is 2, so 2 is not a unit, and GCD of 6 and 3 is 3, so 3 is not a unit, and GCD of 6 and 4 is 2, so 4 is not a unit. We can summarize this in a theorem, and the theorem says that an element A in Z sub M is a unit if and only if M and A are relatively prime which is the same as saying that the GCD between M and A is equal to 1. We're going to leave this without a formal proof, but what we can note is that we can use Pesut's identity to derive the inverse of the element A. And we can see this as follows. So we have GCD between M and A is equals 1. But according to Bessou's identity, we could write this as S times M plus T times A. So if we take this modulo M, or we take this as the remainder when we divide by M, what we will have is the following. So the remainder when we divide by M, S times M plus t times a will be the same as the remainder when we divide t times a by m because when we divide this part by m we will have a zero remainder so only t times a will uh, persist and this is equal to t and then our modulo operation, the operation modulo m uh, in our ring times a and this as we said will be equal to 1. So from here we can see that the inverse of a will be equal to t. So we're going to make an example of this and the example that we're going to use is to find the inverse of 37 in the ring Z101 with the addition modulo 101 and multiplication modulo 101 as our operations. So let us do this through the Euclidean algorithm. So we can write 101 equals 2 times 37 plus 27. Then we can write 37 equals 1 times 27 plus 10 then we have 27 equals 2 times 10 plus 7 then we have 10 equals 1 times 7 plus 3 and then we have 7 equals 2 times 3 plus 1 so now we have found that the greatest common divisor is 1 here. And what we want to do now is to go backwards to the top of the Euclidean algorithm. So we do this by writing 1 equals 7 minus 2 times 3. And then we will go to the next row and write this as 7 minus 2 times 10 minus 1 times 7 and what we do now is that we collect our 7s and 10s so we can write this as 3 times 7 minus 2 times 10 
and now we go to the next row and we will replace our 7. So here we can write 3 times 27 minus 2 times 10 minus 2 times 10. And collecting our 27s and 10, we can write this as 3 times 27 minus 8 times 10. Now we replace our 10 by writing 3 times 27 minus 8 times 37 minus 1 times 27. And now we collect 27 and 37, so we can write 11 times 27 minus 8 times 37. And now we go to the final row here in our Euclidean algorithm and we replace our 27. So now we write 11 times 101 minus 2 times 37 minus 8 times 37. And finally we collect our 101s and our 37s and we can write 11 times 101 minus 30 times 37. And when we now divide this by 101 and we take the remainder, what is left is, so the remainder when we divide by 101, 11 times 101 minus 30 times 37 is the same as the remainder when we divide by 101 minus 30 times 37. So what we have here is that the inverse of 37 is the same as minus 30. However, we are not really done here because what we have in our set Z101 are the elements 0, 1, 2 and up to 100. We do not have the element minus 30. So what we have to do here is that we have to add 101 to this. So minus 30 plus 101 equals 71. So what we have is that the inverse of 37 in Z101 in our ring is equal to 71. And to clarify that we are in this ring, we write this as module 101.